Um, I will um, shortly talk about two uh, projects uh, <coughs> related to um, Oxiora support in uh, and HTML5. One is uh, Firefox, which is a um, Firefox extension that allows you to encode videos um, before you upload them to sites. Um, that way you don't need any uh, transcoding infrastructure on the server. Um, and people can upload, uh, use the high quality version they might have available locally and they don't need uh, all the bandwidth to upload it. Um, it is <coughs> possible for you to include this on your site with a um, JavaScript API. Um, and <coughs> basically um, define which quality and size you want your video to be and then it's transcoded and uploaded. We will also um, talk about this tomorrow in the workshop a bit, um, but I'll just show one example of a You can on the site. You can also um, tr uh, you can u if, if you have this installed. You can use the site to transcode and can go through uh, various settings here and then um, create an OC file with this and then start transcoding. You also have a preview of the video while it is created. Um, and so this is just a possible interface of how you can in, uh, use the API. This is used um, also on uh, several uh, sites use this now. Wikipedia is working on integration. There is a gadget you can enable already uh, on comments to use it. Um, yeah, so. And then you have a doc video generated and in this case, it uh, stops here, but uh, you, if you, you could integrate it, that it uploads it. It also um, has a chunk-based upload so that uh, the video is uploaded while the encoding is happening So it's, uh, at the same time so to save um, time. Um, the other <coughs> project is uh, um, working on a bit turned uh, back end for the video tech so that you uh, can <coughs> use a, a torrent which um, include, has a, an OC file uh, inside and you can use that inside the video tech. So here you see that the, it's pointing to a torrent and um, this is in an early stage right now but uh, as we're going on this is a um, it's based on um, Tribler, which is a, a BitTorrent client, and they reworked uh, the BitTorrent uh, protocol in a way to download the video um, from the beginning to the start that you um, can play it back while it is downloading, while you share it. I can, uh, here's an example. If I open this page, which uh, looks like this. So you just have. Oh, you don't see that part. Uh, so you just have the video tag. Um, probably it takes. Uh, once I started it here, here on top, you see a small, the small icon came up, which is the background process, that, which is a torrent. So you see it's downloading there right now, and the video is playing back inside of the browser. Um, this version uh, right now works uh, with not pack it fully packaged, but on Linux you could try it out and play with it if you want. Yeah, sure. Um, so you have a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, so with the, with the Tribe plugin, uh, does that ask for the early BitTorrent packets first, like the earlier chunks of the video first? Does it prioritize them? Yeah, that, so the normal um, BitTorrent protocol would always download the packet which um, the least uh, peers have. Um, so because the assumption is that the most uh, you have the most uh, the best opportunity to upload it again. Um, in this case, it will start from um, the beginning, or if you seek inside of the video, it will um, start. First. So it, it will uh, first download the packets you need to continue playing. 
and if there's room, we'll then continue to download other packets. So on that level, they change it, but it doesn't require any change on the uh, BitTorrent server or on change on the other clients. The, you can communicate with all other torrent clients by just requesting the appropriate chunks. Are there any other questions? Okay. Sorry, there's, a, uh, this landscape which is uh, kind of very ambient and the sounds and uh, visuals are very uh, kind of designed to give a certain feel, um, which it does absolutely excellently. You, if you've got a PS3, you've got to play that game. It's uh, just downloadable, it's like five bucks. Um, and something I wrote for the Nintendo DS which is uh, World of Sand, kind of another ambient uh, piece of interactive media. Um, there's these different, various different materials which fall from the fall from the top of the screen. You can draw like containers and stuff for them, and uh, lots of different kind of. I'll just scrub through it. So there's different interactions between the different materials. So you've got water and salt there, uh, forming in the middle to form salt water, and then the green stuff is plant, which is absorbing the water to grow. Um, you got oil there on the right, which is the brownish one. You can draw some fire and burn the plant up. There's some wax there, it's dripping down. Uh, you can, so it's just kind of this toy, like a sandbox environment um, for the Nintendo DS. Um, so, so, like I said, I was kind of interested in what you can do once you have this upwards arrow as well as the downwards arrow from the glowing rectangle. Um, and Part of the uh, the the way of uh, bringing that out to to the open is uh, on the web. So there's not much on the web for games in terms of open source software at the moment. Um, Flash is really the way that everybody does it, which is kind of shitty. So I'm working on writing games in uh, using Canvas and JavaScript, um, which works really really fast, really well in uh, Chrome, Safari, Firefox. Um, and Chrome Frame in IE is a godsend. Um, and there's lots of neat effects you can do. Um, it's really fun to kind of create interactive stories and uh, games and toys, sandbox 
things that you can do with that upwards arrow uh, into the glowing rectangle uh, in Canvas and JavaScript. So I'm looking forward to Canvas 3D and uh, Open 3D coming to the web. Uh, that'll be really cool. Um, kind of works now, but you, if you want it on Linux, you've got to build it yourself. There's no binaries. Um, uh, so that's it. Cheers. Right, um, so how many people know what WAVE is? Does anyone not know what WAVE is? A couple of people, a little, little bit shaky. Okay, so it's, it's a product which Google released as a preview release uh, recently. I, I work on, on WAVE as a software engineer. Um, and among other things, it gives you uh, absolute concurrency of text editing right down to the character level. Um, and it also gives you the ability to put lots and lots of additional content into your communications. So you can have things like videos and images, etc., cetera, in, in a piece of communication with other people. Um, I will show you what Wave is in a second when I do a demonstration. Um, but Wave is more than that as well. It's also a protocol, and uh, we have a reference implementation of the protocol that we've released, and the intention is that people can build their own Wave instances. Um, the reference implementation is, of course, open sourced, uh, and f that these instances can federate with each other so that we can we can build a communication system somewhat like email. Um, that's just a very quick introduction. Uh, if people are interested about it, come and talk to me at some stage, and I'll, I'll run you through it. Um, but what's in, what I wanted to talk about here is is what you can do with Wave and multimedia. Um, so we'll, I'll talk about the product first and then the protocol. With the product, what you can do right now is uh, you can embed YouTube videos if you want, which is not terribly exciting. Uh, you can also write your own gadgets. And there's a gadget that um, uh, Jan and Jan wrote that I'm going to show off, if that's all right with them. Did you guys just put this together yesterday, right? For the others, yes. I'm reusing lightning talk material. <laughs> Is that, that should be working, right? So, oh, shit. So th this is just a, a, a really simple example of a, um, what? Okay, fine. <laughs> right, a video playing inside Wave. Um, using this, this gadget, right? And, and the, uh, the nice thing about this is the gadget API is, is open, so anyone can build their own gadgets which they can put into Waves. Um, this is also slightly disturbing, but that's another story. OK, so that, that's kind of cool. Um, on top of that, uh, you can write things which are called robots that can peek and poke data that's in the Wave and change the state of the gadgets as well. So you could, you could have a robot listening on that wave and responding to user event, to user changes to do something to the video. And I'm sure you can think of lots of different possibilities. Uh, one simple one, which um, we could probably have working by the end of the conference that would probably be kind of fun, is a gadget that displays a video, a smile description in text underneath the video, and a robot that listens on the wave and pushes the smile description into the gadget as people change it. And suddenly you've got a really simple collaborative cut list um, where one person can be making, or, or a, a group of people can work together on, on 
writing an edit list for that video. Um, so that, that's the sort of thing you can do. I'm sure that you could come up with some, some other pretty cool ideas as well. Um, in, in the future, we hope to allow you to access attachments directly from gadgets and robots, which will mean not only can you be working on multimedia content in Wave, but you can just uh, attach it into the Wave and then start to work with it. Um, and hopefully it'll be really nice if we can do ex extension hooks for drag and drop so you can actually respond to people dragging multimedia content into the wave and do something special with it then. Um, so that's the product. That's stuff you can do with the product. There's lots of, of um, customization op opportunities there. Uh, with the protocol, obviously you've got a lot more freedom to build out ideas. And um, I mentioned before that the wave has this, this idea of absolute concurrency right down to the, the character level. This is done by a, um, an algorithm called operational transform, which has actually been around for about 20 years. Uh, but it allows you to talk about changes to state as, as operations, and it allows you to, to basically merge those changes of state with other changes of state that other people have made. Um, and uh, I have been thinking about this for a while. I wonder if it's possible to do a similar thing for media as well, so that you have an audio file or a video file. You have operations which define the ways that you can change those files, uh, and then you use a, f a form of the operational transform algorithm to actually uh, merge those changes so that you can have multiple people collaboratively changing these files at the same time. And um, if anyone's interested in doing something like that, then we should chat and, and see how easy or hard it's going to be. That's, that's all for me. Any questions? Cool. Okay, that's, I think uh, that's it for the lightning talks. If my memory serves me correctly, Douglas Algier is next.